Welcome to our journey of creating this mocha pot in Blender. This time we'll do the UV unwrapping, texturing and shading. So if you've not seen the last tutorial, make sure to check it out. And now let's hop right in. Um, first I will create a standard checkerboard texture to make UV unwrapping a bit easier. So now let's place some seams along the upper top edge of our uh, mocha pot. Do the same in the inside and on the bottom uh, as well and do it uh, along the sides as well. Preferably at the side which is not facing the camera so you don't see the, the crease. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm doing right here. I'm trying a few things out. And now we have to um, straighten these edges in the UV editor since as you can see it's uh, quite all over the place. It's and uh, not what we want in this case. So now let's select the edge loops. Um, very helpful tool right here is uh, of course alt clicking to select the whole edge loop, but also control clicking um, the starting and ending vertex of your, uh, of your loop, since this will select everything in between and then right click and straighten these faces. Sometimes like these ones, you have to do it all manually but I think it worked out quite well in the, in the end. And now let's do the same with this middle part, which intersects with the lower container of our mocha pot. Again, straighten all edges so it fits and make sure to place it in, a, in an appropriate spot in your UV texture. And now let's do exactly the same thing with the lower container. I first place my edge loop in the at uh, the underside of this container since uh, nobody will ever see it and again i am selecting loops and straightening them and i'm making sure to match the proportions of the mesh to our uv map there are some intricate parts like these ones which you have to select manually so you have to go through every vertex and select it but this worked out quite well in the end. I, sh I make sure to um, to match the size of the tiles approximately to uh, between both containers, so the resolution of our textures will stay the same. And now we um, go to the handle, which I quickly unwrapped using just smart UV unwrapping, which is a great feature in Blender. For some parts, you can get away with that. Um, I think especially for these small small parts right here. In this case, I placed an edge loop um, on the underside of our um, of our top lid and to the far side. And I do the same thing with this small pressure vent. So now let's give our scene something to work with. Um, I first uh, add in a camera, which will be our main camera. For shading and testing, I'd like to keep my models in a studio setup with uh, some environment lighting. So now let me add a floor and uh, add me, uh, let me add an environment texture. I chose a texture from hdrskies.com, um, kind of like just a simple studio setup, which I now tweak and change a bit. So um, yeah, the lighting matches and um, I add an area light, a simple area light to give it some shape. And now I add in the first textures, but just in this case to the floor. Um, to make a simple studio setup, you can extrude it out like you see here and then bevel the edge with uh, many, many, um, uh, with a high resolution. So this gives this kind of like infinite floor effect. But this is just for testing. Um, I originally planned to go in a different direction with this model. so. Um, uh, finally, in the third part, part three, um, you will see how this turns out. So now let's shade and texture our handle. I did this by selecting it and uh, pressing Ctrl Shift T to add multiple textures at a time. And I added a simple plastic texture, black plastic texture. And now I'm tweaking the roughness of this plastic material a bit since, as you can see in the reference image, it's not totally glossy. Uh, I will give the same material to this knob on the lid. And now we can do the same thing with our main container right here. I simply added a, 
added a metal material which I'm now going to to change and um, I'd like to give it some roughness and I'd like to add some bump mapping like this one I think this time there there was a normal map involved and um, yeah now very important to set the resolution uh, right like this um, because uh, it shouldn't look too small or too large it should like should look somewhat realistic uh, very important for metal metal objects is the inter interplay between the material and the lighting if you have very harsh lighting very small point lights you will get more more sharp reflections and this is especially visible if you have uh, normal maps applied so make sure to play around with this as well and um, yeah this is exactly what i'm doing right now these small bumps, these surface imperfections, irregularities, and um, the roughness is, uh, play a big role in getting a realistic metal material. I'd like to enhance this effect a bit by adding a bit more contrast. And now I applied, I quickly applied this material to all metal objects. And voila, instantly we have a quite decent model, I think. Now I will go a bit into the details right now and play a bit with the roughness. I think at the moment it is a bit too glossy. Um, it should be a bit more rough since the material is a bit worn out. Mm, the same is true for our handle. And in this one I add some dust particle overlay since this is in heavy use and um, there accumulates a lot of dust on this surface. I do this by adding a new shader a diffuse shader which i blend over the original plastic shader with a mix shader node and um, i do this only where the dust particles uh, are so uh, you see um, this overlay it's a uh, it's not very visible but um, it's ad it adds to the realism and of course the same thing counts for this top knob as well and now let me add some scratches to our final final metal texture. I do this by adding a scratch overlay and mixing it with the roughness, mixing it with the normal map. And I'm playing around a bit right here with these scratch textures. It's not always easy to get the contrast right since you only want very sharp reflections. You don't want want uh, this gray um, gray effect. It's, it should only be very, very defined, very sharp. So color ramp is your friend in this case. And uh, yeah, this is the same process as before. I add in a mix shader, add a new principal shader and play around with this. Now you really see the effect of this, this texture overlay. In this case, um, all scratches are blended over with a diffuse texture, which is uh, kind of dark and um, which has a, uh, a very low roughness since um, this is the way to achieve these, these scratches. I think in the next part, I will add some bump mapping if I'm I've, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, of course I do it, and uh, this will uh, enhance this effect. Very important uh, in, since scratches are grooved in the surface, um, so they they don't stick out the surface. Um, you have to uh, invert your bump mapping in this case to get. A more realistic look. I don't think I'm 100% satisfied with the texture so I might change it uh, in a moment. Yeah I think yeah okay these are the water stains since this um, mocha pot is in use of course I will overlay some some water stains on top with a with a diffuse texture. This is very easy, just mix and blend it. Maybe use um, noise to select selectively um, apply it um, to certain parts, not the whole object, since this will, of course, look fake. Uh, 
But as I said before, surface imperfections really sell the material. Now let's focus a bit more on this small little pressure vent, since this is not made out of um, out of steel. It's more like copper or something. I simply change the color with a um, with a mix node, color mix node, um, to more like a golden brownish color, and keep all the other settings the same. Now I add an ambient occlusion node on top since dark uh, dirt accumulates in these grooves and maybe a bit of rust i will uh, use this as a mask for a dirt texture and blend this over i think i will do the same for the rest of the model later on now i'm defining the color and now i blend a third texture over it there's a third shader, excuse me. And now you see there is this dirt accumulation. Again, in all materials, I think I will do this. And now very important, of course, is to, to always render your, uh, your current scene, since the preview and rendering oftentimes do not uh, match 100%. So let's do exactly this and have a closer look at what we did, I think. Yeah, the textures are a bit too large, maybe a bit too shiny, and I will change that. Now I've give, given my camera a f-stop. And uh, yeah, I think now I will go back into the details, change the scratch texture, since in my case it was a bit too large. They These scratches were a bit too, too rough. Um, so I chose a texture which is a bit smaller. Now I've realized that this transition from the top container to this middle part is not steep enough, so I will quickly take all vertices and pull them up a bit. And now let's play a bit with the environment lighting and uh, again play a bit with the material, with the normal mapping. Do this in all of your textures. And now let's press F12 to render our scene. And yeah, I think this concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And of course, have a look at the final part number three, where we will be integrating this model in a real image. Yeah, and uh, if you want to download the project files and play around with the scene yourself, make sure to follow the link in the description below. And with that said, I think, see you next time and thanks for watching.